Two tribes sworn to hate. Their bloodstained bodies left out in the open to rot. Their souls longing for a peace that they failed to find. As they sought to break the shackles of darkness and heal the wounds of the past, fate denied their quest and thrust them into war. The bridges of hope some dared to build between them were torn asunder. Their dreams were ripped from their hearts with a sword, with a destiny revealed at last. Sama, the darkest places inside me expected this to unfold as it has. I know this is difficult to hear, but you must. You were being deceived by Oboro of the Iga. She is Ogun's granddaughter, and she will always think of her own people first. As the leader of that clan now, there is no way she was ignorant of her subordinates' plans. She invited you to Subagakure for her own reasons. While she may be right, consider this. Oboro we do not see clearly, so we need to concern ourselves with her subordinates. The orders to attack may have come from behind Oboro's back, most likely from Tenzin. I believe it is possible that Oboro was ignorant of this all along. You're defending her? The engagement between Genesuke sama and that woman was a tragedy and a farce. She used his trust to facilitate an attack. Can you not see what happened? His desire for peace was his weakness, and she got close enough to him to manipulate that. I see many ways this may have happened, but the man of whom you speak sits in this room, and I serve him alone. I will not allow you to disrespect him by pointing out unfounded weaknesses in his constitution. Keep on this path, and you will end up no better than the Iga. Does it even matter who did what? It's done! The day has arrived. We strike while the iron is hot and end this. Kenosuke-sama, please! Attacking now is the best option! They're still shaking in their skins from the fear you put it in them earlier! They wouldn't expect us to attack in a second wave! Please! Kenosuke-sama, speak to us! Now, Sama. I need you to bring me a brush and some ink. Yes. And about a coin. I am sorry. A coin. She was a Koga ninja. Like all of us. 
Right. But we must not forget that we are all human beings. <gasps> the Koga and the Iga. We are all the same in birth and in death. All of us human. We need to break these bindings of hatred and revenge which hold us. We need to open our eyes to the other side. To the Iga. Even if it is only one of them. Then that one we will try to know and better understand. Upon my return, those are the words I intend to speak to whoever will listen. What's the matter with you? Why aren't you opening your eyes? told me something many years ago that I have never forgotten. That's enough, Obero. Don't strain yourself to the point of injury. That's not what we want. No one knows more than I the effort you put into your training. How serious you take all of this will never come into question. This is embarrassing. I am the future leader of Super Kakari. You are. And yet you lack the power to master a single one of the ninja arts. There is no shame in being unskilled. What you lack in physical prowess, you make up for with a mysterious power. And it is no ninja art. It is something dwelling deep within your eyes. And it spells out the end. The downfall of the Subakakure ninja. That is what I fear. You will witness this day. You will see the darkness. As it falls, our people will be called into battle in ways never seen before. And we will be forced to entertain thoughts we never imagined. When these days are upon you, you must apply this Yamishichiya potion to your eyes. The Seven Nights Darkness. It will seal your vision from the inside out, making pitch the woes of your eyes. Yummy. It will cause you no pain, my dear, but your eyes will stay closed. Seven days and seven nights, my eyes will be sealed shut. And you have done this? You sealed your eyes, blinding yourself to everything? Our words here are of value to this clan. Have you not heard one thing we said? I am the leader of the Ika people, and every single member of my clan is valuable to me. I have heard what you said and know that I can say nothing to change your mind. I understand the pain that has been inflicted on our clan by the Koga, but I cannot fight Genosuke-sama. I will not betray my heart, neither can I forsake my people. I must convince you that this is the right course of action. And so with this choice that I've made, I can neither deceive my people nor cause any harm. What has she done? Tenzin Sama! What is the reason for this interruption? This box was left at the gate. Why would they return Iyasu's ninja scroll? I guess Genesuke just finally lost his mind. I don't think so. Look at Kashiro's name. It hasn't been crossed out. Damn him. He knew Kashiro would live. The injuries he sustained certainly looked fatal. But Genesuke knew better. He hasn't lost his mind at all. So why return the scroll to us? He would be a fool to ignore the only way to legitimize a Koga victory. Tenzin Sama. What does the letter say? It is from Genosuke. A challenge to us. A what? The no hostilities pact that has bound our people for so long has been nullified. However, I do not intend to resume this fight because I see no purpose behind it. Why should I kill in the name of something I do not believe nor see? Questions such as this have compelled me to travel to Sunpu and ask retired Shogun Iyasu and Hattori Dono for guidance in these matters. And so, I return this scroll to you. 
On this journey, I take with me Kasumi Hiyobu, Kizorage Saimon, Yoroga Hyoma, and Kagero. You might have thought we would come to your village, but we will not. We are already on the Takailo Road. Know this. If in your anger and purity of rage you decide to slay a single Koga, all the wrath of the next world will fall upon the Iga and destroy you all. My desire to fight is absent, but I will in no way alter my own path to avoid an attack. We know there are seven of you left. If you do attack, you will leave us with no choice but to resist. And if before we reach the gates of Sunpu, we engage in a battle to the death between the Koga Five and the Iga Seven, then so be. If you have no fear, take your whips to your horses and get on the Takaido Road. We eagerly await your response. Tenzin! We leave and hunt them down. Me the seven. Nenki, Hotorubi, find out where they are on the Tokaido Road and report back. Yes, Tenzin Sama. And hurry. Time is a luxury we cannot afford today. Understand? I understand completely. Oboro Sama, I will make all necessary preparations. No one is following us. You can let your guard down some, Hiyama. Surely they wouldn't take the chance of pursuing us through the Koga Valley. Hmm. You're right. They will most likely use the Ego route. The road to Sunpu is long. I wonder when will our paths cross? You should let that go. In war, the victor always moves first. I can't understand why Genosuke Sama returned the scroll to the Iga. And then he wants to trek all the way to Sunpu to find out the reason for fighting? To think that we've been anything other than enemies for the past 400 years is absurd! We don't need a reason to avenge our parents' deaths! <laughs> if I hadn't been such a runt, I could have done something that day. I am not going to let this chance pass me by. You must understand why Gunnisuke Sama returned the scroll. He knows how the Iga think, and he is sure that they will come after us once the message is read. Which part of the message? The challenge, of course. There isn't an Iga alive who would stay away from a fight after reading that. When they find us, we slaughter them, then take back the scroll. I doubt you'll take issue with that. My issues don't rest with Iga blood. I fear that Genosuke Sama might not have it in him to kill Obero when the time comes. <laughs> Gyobu! Gyobu, where did you go? We shall meet again, Iyoma. And who is he to order me around like his lackey? That certainly sounds like Yobu, rushing out on his own like that. Genosuke Sama was very angry when he found out. I'm surprised he got so upset. 
Usually he's much calmer. I really should give Gyobu credit. There is something to be said for circling back around on the enemy. It is a classic move. A part of me wishes I had thought of the plan myself. Gyobu is definitely a force to be reckoned with. The Iga killed his father, therefore he harbors a deep hatred for them. This vengeance mentality he has makes me fear that he may act too hastily. You do not cause me such fear, for you are of a much gentler temperament. That's not it. Hmm? We have another that warrants concern. You mean Kagero? I do. She is deeply in love with Genosuke-sama. Once his engagement to Oboro was announced, Kagero had to bottle her feelings. But with the way things are moving, they are surfacing again. Only now she does not realize their intensity. Her desire will overwhelm her. I have heard that she is the same as her mother before her. At the height of ecstasy, the cry of passion becomes the sigh of death. Her breath, hot with sensual desires, transforms into poison, slaying her partner within seconds. At least that is the way I understand it to be. Fate has always been Kagero's bitter enemy. Then again, women are frightening creatures no matter how you look at them. You may enter. What's wrong? I was curious. Will we be taking a boat out of the Kuwana port tomorrow? Hmm. The weather will decide that for us. It is possible that moving on the mountain paths around Sayaji might be less dangerous. If that's all, then, good night. Not yet. I mean, I wanted to know what you were thinking. Is it not obvious? Genesuke sama you must stop thinking about that eagle woman. Danjo-sama said something interesting to me before he left for Sunpu. He said the time had come to find Kagero a mate, a man to share herself with. Why? So she can have a baby girl all of her own? A noble cause, I suppose, but how many men are going to have to die for it? Like all women, she wants a child, and I hear there are many men willing to put it on the line for her. She is beautiful. I doubt you could find anyone to disagree. But that is what makes her so frightening. Uh, Kagero! Genesuke-sama. Please hold me in your arms. Kagero, look into my eyes. I want to die with you. Don't be a fool. If you want to die, wait until after we've removed every Iga name from the Asu scroll. And then... It ends. I cannot use my technique on any of the Iga women. Which begs the question. When face to face with her, can you kill Obero? I can. I know my place. I will gladly give my body over to all of the eager men. And one by one, they will meet their doom in a fit of stolen rapture. No! The poison! Get us, get over! Simon! What happened to you? Genosuke-sama! My eyes. The poison got into my eyes. You're blind? <laughs> Finding them didn't prove to be too difficult, wouldn't you agree? Yes. Uh huh? I don't see Gyobu down there with them. I know what he did. He doubled back to try to get Obero from the rear. Sneaky bastard. Kodorubi, you have to get to the others immediately and warn them that danger is on the way. And watch your back. What about those remaining? Yes. 
just leave them to me. And so I shall. When I finish this single-handedly, Tenzin will look like a red-faced fool. You are one of the eager. <laughs> You're looking at the man who will slay all the Koga, but I guess that doesn't mean much to the ones who can't see. <laughs> so, what do you say, Hioma? Whose head is gonna be the first one on the platter? Look, Hioma. What? Have you lost your mind, Kinesuke? Don't you realize he's just as blind as you are? I had no idea the leader of the Koga was such a fool. <laughs> We move on. Tears of blood stain smooth skin. A lone warrior sets out on a quest for vengeance which boils inside, cursing his fate as well as his journey. Inside quiet minds, despair for the loss of what they never controlled moves like eels beneath the surface, and their hearts become as blind as their eyes. On the next basilisk, remembrance. <laughs>